Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video number 36. This is on the evolutionary significance of cell communication. In other words, how cells talk to one another. And so um, one of my, I want to start with a, one of my favorite stories of symbiosis. Symbiosis is when two creatures are living together. And the examples I have here are Vibrio fischeri, which is a bacteria that can bioluminesce. In other words, it can glow. And then this is the bobtail squid, the Hawaiian bobtail squid. And what the bobtail squid can do um, is it can actually bioluminesce as well, so it can glow. But the reason it can bioluminesce is because it has these uh, bacteria living inside it. And the reason it can bioluminesce is if you're a fish looking at the bobtail squid from below, they can adjust the light so they actually blend in with the sky. And so they're both getting something out of this relationship. In other words, the bobtail, liz the bobtail squid is feeding these bacteria. There are these little packets of, uh, of uh, polysaccharides that they actually feed the bacteria food, and in return they give them a place to live. And so cell communication is going to have different roles depending on if you are single-celled or multicellular. So if you're single-celled, you have to have the communication between all these bacteria. You have to be able to uh, sense your environment and you have to be able to communicate. If you're multicellular, then all the cells in the organism have to be able to communicate and make sure that they're on the same uh, page. And so um, we find that the same signals that are found in bacteria are very similar to the signals that are found in eukaryotes. Um, and so in this video, I'm really just going to talk about two things. And that is how communication through signal transduction pathways is conserved through evolution. Um, and so in single-celled organisms, it's a response to the environment. Example I'll talk about is quorum sensing, and so how bacteria can tell other bacteria how crowded it is. And then I'll talk about multicellular organisms, how they can coordinate all their activities. The example I'll give you is how epinephrine is linked to um, glycogen breakdown release of glucose. And so even though these are two separate pathways, the pathway of the single cell, the pathway of the multicellular uh, organisms, we find that the signal transduction pathways, how they work, how they operate, are almost identical. Um, and so that means that they've been around a long time. They've just been co-opted for different um, uses. And so let's start with the uh, Vibrio fischeri, which is a type of bacteria. They have two different ways they could live. In the ocean, if you are Vibrio uh, fischeri living by yourself, planktonically, one bacteria by itself, we find that they don't glow. In other words, there's Vibrio fischeri everywhere in the ocean. They're all alone. They don't glow. It's just dark. But if they live in a colony, if they live together and their numbers start to get large, then they'll start to glow. And so in this bobtail squid, they'll actually live just in this eye pouch right here. And once you get enough of them in that eye pouch, then they'll actually start to glow. And so how do they do that? How do they control that? Well, they use the signal transduction pathway. And so let's say this is one bacteria. So this is one bacteria. And it's all by itself, but it'll still be giving off proteins called autoinducers. And so since it's one bacteria by itself, and these are going to move just through diffusion, the odds of that hitting another bacteria are really, really low. But let's say we add more bacteria. And let's say we add more bacteria and more autoinducers, and then we add more bacteria and more autoinducers. Eventually what's going to happen is that those autoinducers are going to be picked up by other bacteria. That's going to set up a signal transduction pathway, in other words, a series of chemical reactions that cause them to do something. In this case, they cause them to produce a protein. In other words, they're going to transcribe a gene and actually make a protein. And if we're talking about um, this glowing bacteria, it'll actually make a protein called luciferase. Luciferase, and you can always tell if it ends in ASE, it's an enzyme. Luciferase is an enzyme, and it breaks down uh, luciferin, and it makes this glow. And it's an example of where you'd see that is if you've ever seen a firefly, it's the same enzyme, luciferase, breaking down luciferin, it's actually making that glow. That luciferase will blend, or excuse me, will move through diffusion. It triggers this cascade, so this would be a positive effect or a positive feedback loop, and now all the bacteria are going to glow. Now let's say our numbers start to drop off, we're going to have less autoinducers, we're going to have less luciferase, and we're not going to have that glowing. And so quorum sensing is a quick way for bacteria to see how many bacteria are there around, but they can also see, um, they can sense motion, they can sense chemistry, and we're starting, the more we learn about bacteria, the more we're starting to realize that their communication between bacteria is really sophisticated. It's just as sophisticated as the communication we would have 
in eukaryotes. And so what are, the, what are the constraints in eukaryotes? In eukaryotes, we have to get a message out, and we have to get all of our cells to operate together. And so the best system inside our body that explains this would be the endocrine system. And so one of the best glands that we have sits right on top of the kidneys. It's called the adrenal gland. And in the center of that, you have what's called the adrenal medulla. And so that's going to get a message that comes from the brain, and that's called the fight-or-flight response. That fight-or-flight is going to cause the... Um, the cells in the adrenal gland to secrete a chemical called epinephrine. Now this looks a lot like the autoinducers that were secreted by the bacteria and they do the same thing. That epinephrine is going to set up a signal transduction pathway in all the cells. And so remember fight or flight response is when there's danger and then you have to respond to that. An example is you have to get a bunch of blood sugar so we can start making ATP so we can respond. And so by releasing all that epinephrine it sets up a signal transduction pathway. In other words, a cascade of events inside the cell, and I've talked more about how it uses cyclic AMP, but what it eventually does is cause transcription of uh, messenger RNA, the creation of an enzyme, in this case it's phosphatase, and then the breakdown of glycogen to, to create glucose. Now we're looking inside the cell and we're seeing how this addition of just this one um, chemical message, this one epinephrine can set up the signal transduction pathway to create a bunch of glucose. But this could be luciferase as well that was created in those bacteria. In other words, we use communication to sync single uh, cell uh, organisms with their environment and coordinate activities in eukaryotic cells. And so that's cell communication, again, found in all organisms. We're just starting to unlock some of its secrets in science, and I hope that's helpful.